morning. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. There, we, want, we don't want them to miss the you beginning. Well, he should. Hello, hello, hello. It's on. I can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah. There, we, there go. we go. Now we can hear it. It was just the music. <laughs> just the music. All right. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome home. Yes, yes. If we have any visitors, welcome home. Uh, if for the regulars, welcome home again. If you're uh, tuning in Facebook Live, welcome to Living Word. We're glad to have you tuning in and that you chose to spend your time with us this morning. Um, before we get started here for the call to worship, we also want to remind the children that, is there going to be paper? Oh, there is. Paper and, there is. It's right there. Um, paper and crayons, so uh, during worship, if you want to color, um, Pastor Sean wants his wall covered with worship from the children um, through colors. Uh, as uh, I was looking early this morning, I turned open to Psalms, and I thought this would be a good way for us to focus ourselves to begin worship this morning together in our corporate setting. It's in Psalm 67. It says it's time to praise him. God, keep us near your mercy fountain and bless us. And when you look upon us, may your, may your face beam with joy. Send us all over the world so that everyone everywhere will discover your ways and know who you are and see your power to save. Let all the nations burst forth with praise. Let everyone everywhere love and enjoy you. I just want to sit on that for a minute. Let's enjoy him. Then how glad the nations will be when you are their king. They will sing, they will shout, for you give true justice to the people. Yes, you, Lord, are the shepherd of the nations. With that, let's let's stand together as we begin to in worship this morning. Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have, the freedom and the opportunity to join together as a body and a family here to lift you up, to lift you up and to, and to show you our gratitude for you being our Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Shackles off my feet, but there's no sound louder than the captain said, Breathe. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of his promises evermore. Pour out your thankfulness, let it overflow. He 
fled Let me out of the desert Brought me into a stream River of living water Turned my bitter into sweet All my burdens I lifted Took the shackles off my feet oh, There's no sound louder than The captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord say so Sing of His promises evermore Pour out your faithfulness That it overflows There is joy. There is joy in the morning. Springing up in my soul. There is life worth living. Cause he calls me his own. There's a hallelujah. After sweet victory. There's no sound out of there. The captain said there's no sound. There's no sound out of there. exciting just to take a moment and, and look at you guys because I see so many miracles. I know so many testimonies in this room this morning. So it is so exciting to be here. And God, you are, you are a deliverer. You are the promise that we live and stand and breathe, have our being in. Amen. Amen. We live to lift your voice high. to sit find their way at 
the sound of your great name, all condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your grace. Sing that again. Lost or saved by their way at the sound of your great name, all condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your great every fear. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. 
the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. darkness, my God, that is who you are. You 
kid my dad was I grew up in a pastor's home and one of the things that he taught me was that and he taught me by example not like that he taught me he taught me because I watched him do it we would one time I was with him and we came up on an accident and the first word out of his mouth was Jesus and what he what he taught me was that one of the most powerful prayers we can ever pray is just that some, that one word Jesus so now I see it sometimes where I see heartache or I see you know, an accident on the road, or I see something falling apart, and there's nothing else to say. Jesus. The name above every name. Jesus. In this room, we have the miracle testimony of a cancer-free body. Jesus. The name above the name of cancer. Jesus. The name above the name of addiction. Jesus. The name above the name of divorce. Jesus is the name above every name. 
and we've seen so many like miracles and we know of so many other heartaches and struggle and I think sometimes we come to these moments and we think how do I bring a, a sacrifice of worship how do I bring a word how do I bring a praise that is going to get me through those gates and sometimes it's just that simple word Jesus Jesus I place your name above my confusion Jesus, I place your name above my fear. Jesus, I place your name above my family. Jesus, I place your name above whatever that is. You fill in the blank. Jesus, you are the name above every name. What a powerful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. I just encourage you to stand on your feet. This isn't a moment to be a spectator, you know? This is a name, this is a moment to stir up our hearts and say, Jesus, I place you as the name above every other name that seeks to throne itself in my thoughts, in my heart, in my actions. I place your name, Jesus, above every other name that seeks to take throne or take residence in my life. Jesus, what a powerful name you are. What a powerful name it is to call on the name of Jesus that brings us our salvation, our redemption, and our life. Jesus, we praise you today with everything that we have inside of us. We give you our love. We give you our adoration. We give you our affection. Can we just sing that one more time? Jesus, where was it? Jesus' name above all names. Is that in there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not <laughs> what a powerful name it is we'll just go there <sighs> yeah we praise you today God we name it is the name of yeah. Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name yes, we give you of praise Jesus. Today, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The name Thank you, Jesus. of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The name of Jesus. Powerful name it is. The name yeah. of Jesus. Amen. What a powerful Amen. name. The name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We know his name, Jesus. Do you know the name of the person sitting next to you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if you don't yet, if you don't yet, Sean, this is Chris. Chris, this is Sean. Get to know the people next to you. Say hi. We've got Children's Church, kiddos 5 to 12. Can head on back with Karen today.
right, everybody settle down. Announcement notes. Women's Bible study, Mondays via Zoom, Thursdays in person, at, and, and, and Libby just said to say, Jenny Benny's home. Where's Jenny Benny? Right there is Jenny Benny at her home, at, and these are all at 6 p.m. I'm, I'm trying to work real hard on getting the times right today. Books are available for purchase on the fellowship table back there. They are $10 each. It's uh, the, the study, it's on courageous women in the Bible. Sounds really good. Um, it says, you are a daughter of the king. So if you didn't know that, if you didn't know that, you ladies, you make sure you come to the meeting and you'll know. There's things you just got to find out, okay? You know, the men got to start doing something like that. I got to get a plug in. It's not in the announcement, but for the men's Saturday morning meeting, 8 o'clock, get on there. It's uh, it's not a Zoom. What do we call it? It's uh, a what? A Google Meet. But all you got to do, it's, it's, it's real simple. I'm even trying to get Leroy could even do it, but he won't. It's just ridiculous. So everybody encourage Leroy to get on that because I've tried and I have failed. But we want we we want you men to get on here at Saturday, uh, Saturday mornings, 8 o'clock. Google meeting. Just go to the Living Word Chapel website on Facebook. Click on the, the link and just all you got to do is ask to join. And that's it. It's that simple, Leroy. So do it. Pete, Tom, you could do it, too, if you've got a computer. Next, Next Sunday, Sunday. I, got, I, I suppose I should say this with an accent, we're going to have a southern barbecue family meal after the service. It sounded like more of a lisp than a southern accent, didn't it? So southern, southern barbecue, okay, that, that really sounds good. Family meal after service next Sunday, baptisms, all right. Who's going to be baptized here? Anybody coming? All right. Mike and Terry's pool. Dinner meal will be provided. So you get baptism and a meal. You're all set. Okay? Now, and if anybody needs that, I would assume you see uh, Pastor Sean or Pastor Libby. Libby? Okay. Now, final announcement. There is a benefit for Mark Sutherland. Saturday, August 7th, um, it's going to be at the Osceola Community Church. Now, there are going to be flyers in the back uh, pertaining to this. The Living Word Chapel worship team is playing from 11 until noon. So they're hitting the big time. Living Word Chapel worship team, okay? Uh, 11 to noon. Now, they are donations, uh, Mark. Uh, I guess has been in the hospital in regions for, excuse me, just got out this week. He's been in there for like, okay. Anything you want to say to that, Sean? Um, some of you are familiar with Mark. He came in the coattails of the Lyman's over there. Lyman's, raise your hands. He was in a, a really bad car accident. He got hit head on by another vehicle, um, has some, some injuries, obviously, from that, and he's recovering, so they need financial help. I'd love it if we turn up. I mean, we're generous people, so let's show up and, and pack that thing full of money for him. So thank you, guys. Okay, and it says here also that they are looking for donations needed for the auction. So if you've got a car you don't need, extra tractor at the farm, uh, no. I'm kidding, but don't, huh? Fly, yeah, the flyers are in the back of the room. Is that the same flyer? Looks different from here. See? <laughs> I'm not as dumb as I look. Um, so that's the uh, final uh, announcement I have to make, I believe. Is there anything I missed? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, looking for some young lady. Young lady, would you come up here with me, please? Can I give you this? Can I give you this? Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? No. You have no idea what it is. Look on this side. What does it have on it? A buffalo. 
And what does it have on this side? Looks like an Indian head, kind of. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and keep that? Now, did you know at one time you could buy a full-size candy bar for a nickel like that? Would you believe that? You go ahead and sit down. Thank you. How many people can remember when you could buy a full-size candy bar for a nickel? You're not that old. I know you're not that old. You. I'm calling you out. Well, you don't look it. All right. <laughs> I don't know what point I wanted to make. I just like doing that and giving. <laughs> no. Huh? Buffalo nickels went out in 1936. Yeah, they're almost as old. As, that nickel is almost as old as Leroy. Yeah. But Leroy looks better. Okay. So I wanted to talk about the give. I want to use that as an example. There is a story about an old guy who was so tight that when he let his money go with that nickel that he'd make the buffalo beller. <laughs> True story. And that same guy, when it come time to give, he had to take and he had to pry open his billfold with a little bar. <laughs> had to take it out and pry it open with a little bar. Moths would go flying out, you know, that type of thing. And he was just to give was very, very tough for him. Unfortunately, I can relate to that guy a little bit. I can remember times. That's the reason I bought a trifold. I get to think about it twice before I finally part with my money. It opens up the hard way. And always had a lot of trouble giving. But the one thing, and think about this, and, and, and I want to know if I'm the only one. You know, it's very difficult to, to start giving. And then when they start talking about tithing, I thought, man, that's a lot of money. But the thing about it is, it, you know, it's still sometimes difficult to part with that money. But everybody think about what happens after you've parted with it. Don't you feel really, really good at that point that I did something with it, I gave it with it? So I try to remember that. I try to remember the feeling afterwards when I give. Now, I'm not saying that. I just want you to know that, that if you're going through them things, I go through them too all the time. You're not alone in that, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that Living Word Chapel is hurting for money. You people have been very, very generous, extremely generous. And because of that, Living Word Chapel is running, just like I talked a couple weeks ago. And it's running well, as you can all see, and it's, it's owing it to all you. And I have to announce not up there, but you can give through text to give, Venmo. Remember, I told everybody what Venmo was a couple weeks, a month ago. PayPal, you can pay through PayPal, you can pay through charity, or you can come up and put the money into these very attractive black tubs up here. Um, so with that, Father, bless the givers, bless the people who have given here. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, it's with great pleasure that I bring up Pastor Sean Higgins. You are such a goofball. <laughs> Am I right? I like him. You know, a lot of you don't know this. He writes plays. You know, we got a lot of new faces in here over the last year or two years. And he writes, uh, we've done three or four plays here that he's he's done, and they're absolutely a joy. So. I'm hoping you'll bring it back because we fill the place and, and it's just a good old time. So everybody re release your hand over Terry and say more plays, more creativity. <laughs> Amen. He looks scared. I don't know what I'm going to do today as far as where I'm going to stand. I do know what I'm going to talk about. All right. So we're going to start in Matthew 17, and you see, we've been on this subject now for, I don't know, maybe five weeks. It's been moving in and out of uh, the kingdom of God, how good God is, the Father, how uh, awesome Jesus is, and what it means for our life. We've kind of transitioned now into being a people of extreme joy. Remember, slap some joy on it. That was last week. You guys remember that? 
How many of you realize that maybe this week wasn't the most joy-filled week? Right? It tends to happen. When you start to step into something, you tend to start to get attacked. So I can be the first to tell you that I may have preached a message last week that I wasn't able to follow to its fullest the week afterwards. So as a preacher, that's kind of hard. Am I right? So, but I'm just a real person, just like you guys. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody else. I don't. I, w I strive to try to lead you guys in a direction and do things, but I stumble just like everyone else too. So, give my wife a hug this week. <laughs> um, so, we're going to start in verse 1 in Matthew 17. And it says, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, which is James and John, or Jacob and John, and hiked up a high mountain to be alone. Then Jesus' appearance was dramatically altered. A radiant light as bright as the sun poured from his face, and his clothing became luminescent, dazzling like lightning. He was transfigured before their very eyes. Then suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared, and they spoke with Jesus. Peter blurted out, Lord, it is so wonderful that we are all here together. If you want, I'll construct three sh shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while Peter was speaking, a radiant cloud composed of light spread over them, enveloping them all, and God's voice suddenly spoke from the cloud, saying, This is my dearly loved son, the constant focus of my delight. Listen to him. So first off, Peter is absolutely my second favorite human being to ever live besides Jesus. Because this dude was interrupted by the Father. Like, have you ever been talking and God's like, hey, shut up for a second. I got something to say. He also walked on water, right? That's pretty cool about him. He did a lot of stuff. He, he cut off a guy's ear in front of Jesus. That's a pretty big mistake. I don't know if you've ever violently attacked someone in front of the Lord. That's a big deal. And then Jesus healed him. Um, he also said he was going to protect Jesus. And Jesus was like, no, nah, you're not. You're going to deny me. And then that was right after he told Peter, that the church is going to be built upon you. So pretty interesting dude who went through a lot. Uh, but he's also a uh, example of us in our walk with Jesus. Yes, we didn't take a sword and cut a guy's ear off, but God has always been with us all the time. Correct? Good, bad, and otherwise? So the reason I bring this up is because we're going to talk about God as a good father today. That's going to be the subject we keep going on because it's very much apparent to me that ingrained in our culture, church culture, Western Christianity, and just our inward thinking, we can't. Wow. Wow. You got, look, we all, Paul McCurry, if you're watching on Facebook Live, we have fallen apart without you here. Check, check. Hey, hey, no, it's still on there. Yeah. Yeah. Check. Check, 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 check. All right, I guess it's it's very distracting, very distracting but I will but keep, I will going. keep going. Um, um. Where was, where I? was I? What was the last was thing, the last thing I, said I said before all this started to happen? Oh, God is a good father because see, it's deep inside of us that I'm not using it. I can't. I feel I like, feel like I'm, I'm uh, getting, wrapped getting wrapped in toilet, in toilet paper, paper all over again. <laughs> check. Check, 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 check. I'm not. I'm, I'm done. done. We're, We're ditching, done. The, We're ditching mic. the mic. Pastor's, Pastor's orders. orders. Check. Check. 
Check. Check. Check. Check. Check. Check. Check.